like you mentioned, the number was 11.85% for December. National Bureau of Statistics releasing that number. Joining us in the studio to take a look at the inflation numbers for December and, of course, the outlook going forward into 2011 is Ayo Teriba, who is CEO at Economic Associates. Thank you so much for joining us Thank on the you. show. First of all, let's just run through some of the figures. 11.8% for December, which is year on year. reflecting yes, a year on year. full year 2010. That's right. But on a month-on-month -month basis, we see 1.29% growth in December. What are your overall impressions of these numbers? Well, the 11.8% for the full year, you know, means we're talking 12% inflation rate for Nigeria in 2010. Yes, 1.2 month-on-month for December is on the high side, but that seems to be the pattern. If you compare with recent years, December tend to have a high, January and February also on a high. But if you look at the last quarter of 2010, the total growth in the index was 2%, which mm -hmm. if you analyze, gives you like, currently you can be saying the underlying inflation rate is about 8% per mm -hmm. annum, mm -hmm. and then of which course is not bad. And of course, for core inflation, we see that down to 10.9%. That's stripping out food items. And that is down from about 12.4% in August. So it seems that the... Um, there is the, a steady downward trend that's right. you know, in inflation since the end of the third quarter. And that's reflecting the, the monetary stance of the government to some extent. I say? know. I don't think it's reflecting the monetary stance of the government. Um, or the, the central bank, rather. Mm. No, it's mm -hmm. not reflecting their stance. It's, you could already tell before the decision to tighten rates that the last quarter was going to see a moderation of inflation. Mm. That's I, uh, outside the food inflation. Yes, we know that um, there's little they can do with that because obviously that had some, there's a seasonally, seasonal um, factor there with um, the late rains coming a bit late, um, as the Central Bank of no noted in the MPC um, up to August, communique yeah. up to August. Like June, but July, but August. the core inflation, that is really where the the monetary stance can have an impact. And you are saying that you don't think it's, refl it's reflective of the monetary stance at all. I don't think that the tightening has anything to do with the moderation that we are seeing in inflation. Uh, the tightening, uh, the inflationary trend, it was clear that the last quarter of the year you will see a moderation of inflation, and we have. Um, well, I'm not sure that the, the tightening was called for. And in my view, I guess they should lose in monetary policy, mm. you know, as soon as they can, because you have a very, very tight credit and liquidity situation if you look at the money supply figures. I was just going to come to that. The money supply figures reflecting um, just about 7% growth up to November. Um, and that's an interesting area because we're having, at, at least at some point in the year, inflation seems to be rising. But money supply still very low. I'm mean, definitely looking at them from in, in, um, with historical levels. You no, know, we're talking of steep, real contractions in cash, in credit, and in money supply numbers. And that doesn't call for tightening of monetary policy. It calls for loosening of monetary policies, especially when you can rule out any underlying inflationary pressures. And then what's your view, the main risk to inflation going forward? I mean, some have obviously played up the election spending as a risk, um, and which to some extent is the reason why we've seen some intervention from the government and from the central bank. Well, um, we have held over the last decade at least three elections. And if you look at each of the election years, it, the inflation could well drop you know, during the election year, which means that um, election payouts are, could be saved. You know, the chances of they being saved being you know, used to buy shares are as high as they've been spent on consumer items, which is what the index we are discussing picks up. So until you do see the pressure on spending, I would not speculate. And so, in your view, by saying um, we, sh we shouldn't be scared about election spending, if it's going to be inflationary, we should wait for the pressures to build up, then we address it. Uh, right now, I don't see any any source of inflationary pressure. What about the oil price, given where it is now, and of course the fact that we import so many items into Nigeria? But there's more concern about getting growth to be more broadly based. There's more concern for capacity building, demand mm. 
Overall aggregate demand in the country has been weak. weak. Real wages are weak. You know, so uh, monetary aggregates are contracting. So where is the inflationary pressure going to? No problem. Yeah. I think we may have to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Ayo Teriba, CEO of Economic Associates, giving us his take on the inflation numbers. Obviously, he doesn't think there is much risk going forward.